name's Tara Rushton and I'm from Fox Sports and I'm your host for this morning. Well, as you know, last year was the inaugural year, the inaugural year of the competition for Westwood FFA Cup. And it's fair to say that it was an absolute success. Well, the romance of the FFA Cup is well and truly alive and we're really looking forward to seeing some more David and Goliath moments played out in the pitches all across Australia in 2015. Occasions where I don't think you actually have to say much, you just have to look around the room and realise that the FFA Cup is real, it's unique, and I have to say it's a bloody fantastic thing for Australian football. Uh, it's great to be at Earlwood Wanderers. Um, I don't know much about the club, but you only have to look around the room to see the rich history uh, and to see the work that's put in, been put in to help us launch here this morning. I'm really delighted to be at Earlwood uh, to launch the second season of this competition. This year it's set to be even bigger. Uh, we'll be up around 650 clubs, all nine member federations, including the Northern Territory, are uh, involved. Some of the games have already kicked off in Northern New South Wales, Queensland uh, and Victoria. We've got an improved format, so we've condensed things. Uh, we're allowing for the grassroots clubs to be uh, a bit more match fit than perhaps they were with the latest start last year. Uh, and we'll work through to a final on Saturday the 7th of November. Of course, we sold out this, this, the grand final last year uh, down in Adelaide, which was a fantastic result and showed how people have got behind the competition. Fox Sports are enhancing their broadcast commitment. And I'm really pleased to say that we'll have 11 live matches in full, uh, which includes four matches from round 32, two from the round of 16, two from the quarterfinals, both the semifinals, and of course the Westfield FFA Cup uh, final will be live. Uh, we'll also have single camera coverage uh, at the non-full broadcast matches from round 32 to round of 16 in the quarterfinals. So great commitment from Fox Sports to this competition. There's lots of people that work hard to make this competition happen. There's lots of people who don't get paid uh, to, to make sure this competition happens. And I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, all the clubs, all the member federations, all the players, all the volunteers, uh, such as the people here at Earlwood Wanderers, who, who make this such a special part of Australian football. May it live on for many years. Good luck uh, in chasing this fantastic trophy. I look forward to going to FFA Cup games and seeing who takes out the title on the 7th of November. Thanks for being here so much. Centre Group is now the owner of Westfield in Australia. And our purpose at Centre Group is to create extraordinary places that connect and enrich our local communities. So we were absolutely thrilled to partner with the FFA um, to bring to life the inaugural season of the Westfield FFA Cup. And excitingly for us, connecting the Hyundai A-League with local grassroots football communities from over 600 clubs across the country, many of which are very close to our Westfield shopping centres and we now um, have built partnerships with them. We enjoyed the season seeing Adelaide United win, but we also really enjoyed seeing the really impressive efforts of lots of clubs like the Bentley Greens and Adelaide City showcasing their talents against uh, some of the A-League's best. Looking forward, we are thrilled to be partnering again on this season's FFA Cup and we look forward to the success of the first season being built on and generating what we know will be lots more interest, fans and viewers. And finally, we'd just like to wish all the players, coaches, media and officials all the very best for the coming season. Thank you. The preliminary rounds of the FFA Cup, they've already kicked off. They kicked off last Saturday in Northern New South Wales, Brisbane and Victoria with the remaining member federations starting between now and May. The round of 32, which involves all 10 A-League clubs, will be played over four match days between the 28th of July and the 12th of August. We go to the round of 16. That will be played on two match days between the 25th of August and the 2nd of September. So for those of you that don't know, this clubhouse obviously is uh, rich in history as well as this club here. Um, although it was officially formed in 1946, there are records that say that football was played in and around this era since 1912. And it's not only that, but um, apart from the, the trophies and the photos that you can see on the wall, the rich history that this club has, five soccer roos have played within these ranks, which is pretty unbelievable. And these include the late, great Johnny Warren, fellow 1974 soccer John, John Watkiss, 
as, as well as Peter Raskopoulos, who we've um, seen. There's a fascinating photo of you, young man, over there in your under-13s team. I tried to look at that and find you, but I didn't have too much luck, I've got to say. As well as Andrew Kotska and um, more recently Bernie Bean, who started here uh, as a seven-year-old. So, fortunately, as I said, Peter's here, and I'd love to get you up on stage to have a chat with you about your relationship with the club. So, if we could give him a round of applause. Now, talk to me about that. I talked about that fascinating photo of you. How did it all start? What are your early memories of playing here? Well, the early memories were fascinating. Um, I remember uh, the deputy principal of Barton Park Infant School giving my father a note after watching me play a bit of football in the playground and said, you've got to go on trial uh, for the Earl of Wanderers. President Bernie, uh, I think it was 1969, was uh, Mr Sheen. So Dad and myself, being a migrant dad, his English was the best we got lost on trains and buses. <laughs> Ended up going to the trial, I think it was about 20 minutes left. It was a bit embarrassing for me because Mum always used to dress me in a tailored pair of shorts, brown, brown socks and hush puppies. <laughs> so, I was, quite fashionable. Uh, you know, I was, as you could probably tell. So, so I played 20 minutes with a Earl Wanderer shirt and hush puppies on. So I... Uh, Obviously I went okay because they uh, signed me up and two months later, my grandfather, we used to trek up Hardwell Avenue, which is, we used to live in Barbara Park, trek up every Tuesday and Thursday night and every Saturday and play, uh, play our home games here. But basically my, my thoughts were more than just football. In, uh, as David said, his parents bought a house in 1950 in Earlwood. In the 60s and 70s, Earlwood was... Uh, was basically a, a middle-class, hard-working Anglo-Saxon suburb. My grandfather used to take me up to the games when I was seven, didn't speak a word of English. But my thoughts are, and my memories are how the club embraced me. The, uh, the President Sheehan, Tex Brown was the secretary, what a fantastic name, Tex Brown. <laughs> uh, my coaches, Mr Chinnery and Mr Garrity and Mr Sheehan, and down the track it was Mr. Koska. So my memories were more than just football. Yeah, the pinnacle was when we won the Champions and Champions in 1975. Five. It's my story now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the memories were really about the late Johnny Warren. And every time we met up with Johnny Warren, every time we met up, the talk wasn't about football, it was about the presidents, the volunteers, the canteen ladies. So, what I'm trying to say there is, and, and I know the presidents and the board are here, and a lot of the volunteers maybe don't get enough thanks and appreciation what what they believe they should, but let me tell you, you're always in our memories, you're always in our thoughts, and we always talk about it. Now, you said that it all started with Elwood Wanderers for you, but you've represented Australia. So, what happened after you finished your playing career here? Well, I went to, uh, at the age of 14, I went to Sydney Olympic. I started playing uh, first grade there. My first game was when I think it was 15 and a half. So it just happened really quickly. And, and um, like Ange, you know, we played in the NSL. We went through the Australian youth team, senior team, which was pretty quick. And uh, it was a uh, very enjoyable year. Now, talk to me a little bit about your relationship with Ange. You um, also played him on his debut against Czechoslovakia in 1988. Tell me a bit about that game. Well, look, Ange was always, it doesn't surprise me to see Ange where he is today. He was a player, he was a left back, um, he was an excellent player, but more importantly, he was tactically, he could read the game well, and obviously uh, it, it, he's in good stead today as the Australian coach, and he's made us very proud. Yes, indeed. Now tell me also about your debut for the Socceroos in 1981. There's a little bit of an interesting story about that as well. It was basically, we were in, uh, we were in the youth team uh, in 1981, the World Youth Cup was, uh, was in Sydney, Australia, and uh, then Les Schoenke picked a national team, and it was basically the majority of that was with the youth team. We played in Indonesia, and uh, away we went. The captain? Yeah, well, I was the captain of the youth team, so it was just... Captain on debut, that's uh, quite a great achievement. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and I'll ask you, what were your thoughts of the inaugural edition of the FFA Cup and what are you looking forward to seeing this oh, year? It's, it, it's fantastic. It allows, it allows the, the grassroots 
Well, like I said, all those, those volunteers, all those little kids, there's plenty of uh, uh, board members here from the old wanderers, and uh, it allows everyone a little bit of hope. And in life, that's all we require, a little bit of hope to go forward, and uh, excitement, and, and you, know, you can tell your kids, let's, well, let's go, hopefully all the wanderers or other uh, you know, junior clubs can play with some of the, the big clubs around Australia. Thank you for all of us, uh, all of you for joining us here this morning. We're very much looking forward to the Westfield FFA Cup.